Hello everyone and welcome. We've got a nice visual upgrade recap of patch 1.018. So we're going to go through everything continuing on from my full breakdown and seeing visually everything that is coming to season two. So strap in and get ready because I am so excited for this patch to finally drop. Hello, yes, smash a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more daily official Call of Dragons content with me, Mr. Sneaky, an official Call of Dragons content creator. And with all that intro out of the way, let's go into the recap, because you guys know we went through a nice full in-depth upgrade on 1.018. There will be an info card just located somewhere above us here, and that will lead you to the full big round down but this is a little bit more of a quick update you know a quick summary of that patch for people that want to see a bit more information because in that they did post a little bit later on a visual patch update which is a lot better than the patch updates that we was able to to look at. So when we go into the Icebound um, update, we're gonna go straight into the point one, which is the War Pet system. The War Pet system looks amazing in this game. So the way it appears to be is that in the new zone in season two, which is the map Belleron, where the new Belleron faction of dwarves are gonna be residing, you are going to be tasked with capturing these war pets. And these war pets are almost, I would say, similar to <laughs> almost Pokemon, guys. I'm just saying, it's a little bit like a Pokemon. You might be sat there like, you know. You sure about but that? But with that, you know, you get the fact that you, you, you just get Pokemon. And these Pokemon, though, literally, when you read along this area now with me, you're gonna see why you get that Pokemon by it because you're gonna be able to rename these war pets to whatever you want. You're gonna be able to like pet them and like talk to them. You're gonna be able to feed them. And then on top of that, they're gonna be fighting alongside your army. So we know from the patch notes, they said that these were gonna help you fight against the darkness. So I don't know if this is only gonna be a PVE exclusive content. So it won't be a pay to win structure or will these war pets as well give you some buffs in the open field? We still don't know that until they give us either the patch in a few days or when it, you know, maybe a new announcement goes live. So it's a really good little tip here. If you guys want to check it out again, you can find this on the Discord and you can go through all of the information below. There is more to do with what we've already gone over in the patch rundown. So if you want again, you can just go back to the beginning and check that info card out. But this is the new map and I'm actually excited for this map because it looks really really cool right because from what we've basically been explained to or told by the devs in that patch detailing it was this land that was desert based which had these jeweled you know areas where the macaw areas or macala areas are basically we're going to see those in a moment but to the north of them was the frost zone where the dwarves resided so that's really cool that you can see this map it's a lot smaller though and they've said obviously a smaller map is going to be easier for you to find these war pets and probably do the content in the game but at the same time guys you remember a smaller map just means it's a little bit more cramped to space so pvp could be a lot more quicker in this season so just prepare yourselves for season two if you are going into it but i love this map honestly the detailings in it and when we look into it with the mouse here i honestly believe it's in sections so this one land mass here where my mouse is going around is one zone potentially and then this next is the next zone here then you've got the next zone like around here somewhere and then the fourth right and maybe you've got another zone around here so you've got these different zones, I think, four maybe potential zones that you might be fighting towards so you get an entrance. So this is like the next zone, next zone, and next zone. And then you can enter these mountains, which is the end game areas. I'm like, and that's what I'm assuming the map layout would be, right? Because the whole story in the patch notes is all about us as Tamaris players, the Tamarians, going into Belleron and actually trying to create a friendship 
with the Dwarven clan. So it is very exciting because again, when you go into the future, potentially we might get a fourth new faction to the game, which is some dwarf boys. And I'm just saying, if I can turn into a dwarf faction, I'm probably gonna go it. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I love dwarven aesthetics. So we'll soon see what the future will bring in that. But as they said in the patch notes, two new behemoths. I mean, get an image leak of them here, the two new behemoths. And they look amazing, guys. The frost giant. I love how the frost giant has almost that dwarven feel to it because it has that armor so it's almost like a very old giant that has maybe gone through some really long dwarven wars and it's just idling around now aimlessly fighting right and then you've got the frost dragon and that frost dragon looks really cool i hope it's got some really sick abilities but again we will see these in action when hopefully we get closer to the season or when we enter season two. So a load more obviously it leaks there. I hope you guys are getting pumped as I am because I'm getting so hyped about this. But here we get the new information about again the heroes that are coming. You can read all of this. You can pause the video here if you really want to. But in the infograph we're gonna go into the new heroes and then afterwards the artifacts. And the artifacts I was actually wrong about guys. I was wrong. Yes, finally I was wrong about something and that was because I misinterpreted the uh, information. But here we go. We've got the Theodore, which is cavalry garrison and skill. I did guess him to be a cavalry garrison hero, but maybe on the tank side instead of skill. So it's cool that we've got a really powerful garrison hero here, potentially for the cavalry players. And then you've got Forendil. Forendil, Cavalry, PvP, Control. Honestly, guys, he's got three of the best. He's got two of the best trees in the game, PvP and Control. So this hero will be fantastic. I can already imagine. So it's just down to now what skills these two heroes are going to bring to the table. All we know maybe from Theodore is that he could break potentially shields and do some sort of armor penetration or something in that regard. And Forendil says he can transform from his current look into a bird. So potentially he might, when he goes into a skill form, potentially change from a human into some sort of spring eagle and get a massive amount of stats. So who knows? what the future will bring for the, the game. So I can't wait for it. And the reason why I'm actually deep diving into these heroes and giving you maybe really crazy and ludicrous ideas is because of the new artifact. The new artifact is Oath of Stormpeak, cavalry, PVP and tank. And I was wrong. I was wrong here, guys. I thought this was gonna be the sword of Theodore. But as you can clearly see here from the pure aspects here, this sort of like pendant almost is the pendant I believe Forendil has or someone has, right? So it's nothing to do with Theodore. So it's really cool that this is some sort of spring warden oath or pendant artifact, but the effect I think is really cool. It's gonna be, I think, very, very abusable and I'm not gonna lie, I can't wait to see how players actually use this. Because the way this artifact works for a cavalry PvP tank artifact, it summons a clone of your legion. What the f So you basically become almost Shaco from the game League of Legends. You just copy yourself and you've got two of you that you can control. They can also, if you look, the clone's attributes and skills are identical to your legion. So they do have the exact same stats and they can cast your rage skill, which is very, very terrifying, but it will deal less damage and it takes more damage. So the clone legion, as you can see, damage dealt is minus 90%. It's only doing basically 10% more damage than you are, but the way it, I think it's really powerful is that the fact the clone legion damage taken is plus 1600%. So you've got basically almost like a 600% upgrade on that, from the amount of damage it's gonna take. So we're gonna have to see in game, honestly, how much this number matters. Because the if this number is low enough, this big clone could do some crazy things. Because imagine guys, you don't need a really powerful skill damage ability to use this effect. 
What about if you use someone like Indus? What if you use someone like, um, you know, a hero that has a AoE debuff in the future for the heroes? So I honestly feel like this is going to be the future for the game. So just be aware of what this could potentially bring in PvP and keep your creativity open-minded. So when we go to the ending areas of this patch which i do like is just showcasing a couple of the new wonders and i like what they've done castle first forge does not look anything like iron forge from world of warcraft and that was the big thing i was worried about the fact that they've got these dwarves in the fro frozen you know mountains with their city which is called frost forge which is the exact very similar name to world of warcraft's iron forge but this looks beautiful. I love the fact that you can see how it's been beautifully incorporated into the mountain here. So I can't wait to see this in the game. And there's Mikala's Market. So that was the place I was trying to remember from the beginning. So this is going to be in the desert where they said there was rich, massive jewels and nice, clean sandstone cliffs. And you can see this in this little quick preview of two of the wonders that you're going to be able to claim for hopefully some new rewards in the future so i hope you guys love that nice little recap of the whole update on 1.018 at the bottom is the little bit of extra you can again pause it here read up on that while we do finish up the video so thank you for watching and if you've not watched the previous video i will try and put the link in the description below as well as the info card was at the beginning of the video so you can click that and i run down every single point in all of these different improvements as well as the events increase as well as different cho choices in the pc improvements and even the fact that like different adjustments for rank free units in alliances and stuff like that so you can still see a load of things that are going to be implemented in the game but i do discuss a little more more in depth but with all that Without going too crazy, smash a like, comment, and subscribe if you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you have. We've gone over 1.018 in a beautiful recap that the devs have reposted a little bit later on from the news that we all got in-game and through the Discord server. So I hope you guys are looking forward to Season 2 in the Icebound Earth with me. I'm going to be live streaming it when this goes live. So I hope you guys tune into the channel to watch that live stream with me and get a first look, first impression and with me all together. So thank you for watching and I hopefully see you in the next video.